In this video, we're gonna take a look at five finder tips to make your editing life in Final Cut Pro so much better. Have you ever gotten into Final Cut Pro and realized that your footage is upside down or maybe accidentally filmed vertically? Rather than bringing that footage down onto your timeline, going to the video inspector and rotating it, and then having to do that every single time you bring this footage down onto the timeline, you could instead select your footage select Reveal and Finder, and then just push Command-R twice to rotate it. And now when we jump back into Final Cut Pro, we'll notice that our footage has been properly rotated in the browser. So if I bring this in, it's no longer upside down. Before you ever import your footage into Final Cut Pro, I strongly recommend that you first separate it out into folders. For example, with this project, I have a Blackmagic iPhone camera app, my FX30, and my regular iPhone videos. Now that I'm in Final Cut Pro, if I go to my import window, then locate the folders I wanna bring in, so Blackmagic iPhone, FX30, and iPhone videos, as long as I have keywords from folders checked here on the right side, then push import selected, we'll be able to find those keywords extremely easily by expanding out our event and now we can see each of the different collections. Something that I have to do all of the time in Final Cut Pro is remove a background from a still image. But Finder actually has a really great way of doing this. Rather than going in and creating a manual mask around your subject inside of Final Cut Pro, we can instead locate the folder here in Finder, right click on it, go to Quick Actions, and then select Remove Background. If you don't have this particular quick action, you can go down to Customize and make sure that Remove Background is checked in this list. Also, if you have something like Pixelmator, you can have their variation of Remove Background for even higher quality results. From there, we'll push Done, and now if we go Quick Actions, select Remove Background, we can see our original image here, and then we can see the version that has the background removed. Now I can just place that on my timeline and just like that, we have a perfect image ready to go for whatever project we're working on. Have you ever gotten into your footage and noticed that all of your names are absolutely crazy, making it very difficult to tell what shot is what? Well, fortunately, Finder allows for mass renaming. If I go ahead and press Shift and select all these different clips, we can right click, then select Rename. From there, we can change it from Replace Text over to Format. Now I can type in whatever name I want, so I could just type in Subscribe. We could even add in an underscore, and then we can also have it number each of these. So let's go ahead and start from the number one, then I'll push rename. Now Finder has gone through and renamed all of these with a subsequent number. That said, Final Cut Pro does have a mass renamer built into it, which I'll have to cover in another video. And lastly, another very common thing I need to do in Final Cut Pro is show an app icon, whether it's Final Cut Pro, Apple Motion, or any other program I'm currently using. Now, if you're like me, you've probably gone to Google and looked up a PNG image of whatever logo you're trying to locate, that said, oftentimes you'll only find a dated logo. And if you want the most up-to-date version, there's a very simple method inside of Finder. All we need to do is locate the app we want to get the logo from, right click, go to options, and then select show in Finder. Now that we have it in Finder, just push command I to get info. From there, we can go to the top left corner and you'll see this tiny version of the app icon. Just click on that and press Command C to copy it. Now go to whatever your favorite image editing software is. For this project, I'm gonna use Affinity Photo and we'll just go up to File, then select New from Clipboard. And just like that, we have a perfect PNG of the app icon ready to go. Once you've exported your image, you can just drag that into Final Cut Pro at any time and you'll notice that it's a super high quality version that also includes the drop shadow from the original icon. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.